Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be continuing my study on John Lara's The Samaritan. Today, we'll be looking at Act 1 still, scene 3, and the second episode of that scene. So in the previous scene, I mean in the previous episode of scene 3, there was what I call the snobbling Samaritan crisis. And uh, Harvester, Bembe, and the mayor Musio Atunya were all jitters. And they called for a meeting at the Medingo Golf Club in the jungle room at 9 p.m. to deliberate on the accusations against them on the Samaritan Act. Right now, in this scene, the three are still at the same venue, that is Medingo Golf Club, and they are proposing the way forward or the suggestions to deal with the accusations against them in the newspapers as well as in the Samaritan Act. So we will still consider the literary triangle in analyzing that, and we will have a triangle here. So just as always, we have characterization at the top. Then on the base vertex, there is the aspects of style. Then the themes here, or the thematic concerns. So it's also imperative to note that I normally give individualized lessons for those who would want to learn basic English as a way of communication. So you can always find my content uh, I, uh, my contact at the comment section so that we can plan classes on basic English. Those who are also preparing for KCC exams, I am also there to guide and mentor for better grades. So you can also note that. So, the, basically, the plot is that uh, the trio, Bembe, Harvest, and Mosi, are still giving suggestions on the way forward. And the first one, Mosi suggests doing a press conference. Going forward, he suggests that there should be a comprehensive press statement that he should issue. And in the press conference, they are to deny the fact that they did not give prizes to Alveta and Montano during the Samaritan app launch at Sagrada Secondary School. So, apart from that, the statement to be given should also counter allegations, especially on corruption that have been leveled against them. And then, there should also be some points on cyberbullying and the concern on the spy software, and that ought to justify the fact that he ordered their ICT officer to ban the Samaritan app. And uh, that quite tells us something about Morsi. And it tells us that Morsi is deceitful. 
He is dishonest. Because in the statement, they are to deny having refused to award prizes to Alvita and Muntam, and they are denying a fact. So that is dishonesty or a deceit. So, another suggestion is also being given by Bembe. And Bembe is kind of suggesting hopes. He suggests that they should use force and that Seymour, Ted, and Ramde, who are organizing an ouster motion, a vote of no confidence for Mosio Atunya, should be put behind bars. They should be taken to jail. So he quite uh, has a forceful approach to things and Harvester kind of disagrees with it. That is when Mosi Watonya comes in again and says that he would want to face the trio, Ted, Ramde, and uh, Seymour in the floor of the chamber house. Something that uh, Harvester is quite keen that he shouldn't do because the elder men and the ward representatives could easily be influenced by the deputy mayor Ramde. Then comes another suggestion that Bembe and Mosi share. Uh, Mosi Watunya intends to use his Red Eagle Network, a kind of a militia, and he is supported by Bembe, who also wants to donate his Ghetto Boys gun. And they, their specific role is to ensure that the chamber house where the vote of no confidence should take place is a no-go zone. So that brings out Mosi as violent. Imagine a mayor who has the control of the police, the police who should enforce law and order, and he resorts to using a violent gun. And that brings about the theme of violence. That violent trait, Mosi Atunya shares with Bembe. Who is going to be kind enough to add his ghetto boys gun as well as the undercover police to engage in that kind of operation. Again, apart from using the Red Eagle Network, there is the abuse of office that has been seen here. When Mosi Atonya, the mayor, instructs Harvester that he is going to send the leader of his gang, black man, and black man should be given money by Harvester, who is the chief executive officer of Maracas municipality, and this money should be used to finance the operation and no go zone to the chamber houses. 
So that amounts to abuse of office because I believe there is no funding that is meant for such financing of such gangs. With the vote of no confidence, the fight against the vote of no confidence won in their minds. The focus now shifts to fighting the Samaritan up. And in fighting the Samaritan up, the mayor, Mosi Atunya, has offered to go and visit Nicole, who is the ethics and innovation teacher at Sagrada Secondary School, and who the municipal officials believe that has the Samaritan up. Number two, Bembe, the Inspector General of Police, has also offered that should such a mission fail, that he has ways of always compelling people to do as he wishes. And that brings us to a blackmail, a theme of blackmail. And when they comes out as a blackmailer, as well as malicious, because he says that he is keen on pinning Nicole down. Maybe he's going to say that she has stolen a school generator, a computer. Or maybe just any other thing. And of course, is the one going to organize that. But this is going to use, he is going to use this to put Nicole on the line with the hope of raining on her to rescind whatever allegations or accusations, or maybe to filter the word that they use, to filter the information about them on the Samaritan up. Again, Harvester also comes out as vengeful. It's like all of them believe that Honorable Basde, who is the official opposition leader, who the mayor mostly derogatorily refers to as the porcupine, is the force behind all allegations written about them on the Samaritan app. He therefore suggests that there should be some maligning information, damaging information that should be written about uh, Basdeo to control him. And that is the same thing that the trio would also want to do for Ian Jaden who is the principal judge. All these are meant to blackmail these people into slowing them down a bit to rescind their kind of principal position in as much as the corruption of these leaders is concerned. Very fast, let us look at some of the major aspects of style that come out here. And uh, there is irony. It is ironical that uh, a skeptical Mosi Oatunya, Mosi Oatunya, who is skeptical because he doubts that. Miss Nicole is going to agree to filter the information about them on the Samaritan app and he refers to Miss Nicole as an enemy of the municipality or an, a kind of an enemy of the people. But then Miss Nicole is someone who is just out to help her society, to help her municipality by ensuring that 
the leaders of Maracas are made accountable. So that is quite ironical. Again, there is hyperbole. Or exaggeration. This one comes about in uh, page 44, where Moses says that the vote of no confidence is never going to see the light of day, not even over his dead body. So that is kind of exaggeration. Uh, he also says on page 45 that they, the trio, need to make sure that no meeting to deliberate on the vote of no confidence ever takes place anywhere on the face of the earth. And uh, that brings about Moses' decisiveness. He is so decisive that he is not going to allow himself to be ousted. The vote of no confidence is also not going to uh, sail through. Apart from that, there is uh, the use of idiomatic expressions. And there are quite a lot of them. Like on page 47, the plan that they have to stop the vote of no confidence, they say that say Moor, Ted, and Rambe are going to be put behind bars. So to put someone behind bars, that is an idea to mean, to mean that they are going to be jailed. And on page 47, they say that in doing that, they are going to kill two birds with one stone. That is on page 47 to mean that by jailing those municipal leaders, they are going to achieve two things. Stop the vote of no confidence, and at the same time, they are going to appease the people that maybe an action of jailing some municipal leaders who are corrupt has been possible. Then, on page 44, Mosi Watonya also says that the vote of no confidence is going to see no, it's not going to see the light of day. It is not going to exist. That is also an idiom. Then, on page 48, the trio also say that Ian Jaden and Nicole are going to be put on the line. They're going to be put at risk using the backward blackmail tactics by Bembe. So there is quite a wide and varied use of idiomatic expressions. Apart from that, there are the themes of violence, abuse of office, blackmail, the ones that we found. Harvester also wants to revenge against Honorable Basdale, bringing about the theme of vengeance. Then uh, there is also the theme of hypocrisy. And we use the irony to bring it out that Nicole, who has rallied Alvita and Montano to come up with this Samaritan app, which puts the Maracas municipality leaders to account, is the one being seen as an enemy of the people. Yet, Mosi Watunya and this group, who are milking the coffers of Maracas municipality dry, are now the saints. That brings about uh, hypocrisy. There is also desperation. through the blackmail tactics that these leaders resort to. It brings about their desperation to stop the 
vote of no confidence, and at the same time to fight the Samaritan Arab. So viewers, basically, this is what forms part of the Act 1, Scene 3, Episode 2 of this text, The Samaritan. The next time we meet, we are going to start looking at the second act, that is Act 2 of John Lara's The Samaritan. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.